Hey, this is Learn Algebra Faster, and in this video we are going to discuss bar graph scales. So bar graph scales are important because they help make each bar graph unique. So whenever I say scale or scales for a bar graph, the thing that I want you to realize is that we are talking about the vertical axis. And we've mentioned in several previous videos that the vertical axis is where you actually count how many things are being measured on the bar graph. And so everything about scales is going to focus right here on the vertical axis. So let's take a look at why scale might be important. If we had a bar graph that said how many people are in a and then blank. It's important to know the scale because depending on how we answer this question it could change the scale quite a bit. So if we were discussing how many people were in a car perhaps the scale would would start at zero and maybe go to four. So that would make sense. It wouldn't make sense to have 10 people in a vehicle, uh, you know, 30, 20, 30, 40, 1,000, a million, 1 billion, that wouldn't make sense. So in this situation, sometimes just single digits and just whole numbers are the right scale for that example. So let's, let's take a look at what the scale might be if we are discussing how many people are in a classroom, like a school classroom. Okay, we might also here start with zero, but maybe we will go with 10, 20, 30, 40. Now 40 would be a pretty big classroom, but, um, but some classrooms are large and they're combined. Um, but this makes a little bit more sense. So it's it's unlikely that you would only have one, two, three, or four people in a whole classroom. It's also unlikely that you would have between 100 and 400. Well, let's discuss the next one. How many people in a school? So if we had a whole school, most schools are bigger than this. So we would need to discuss some bigger numbers. And so maybe maybe in a school we would say 100, 200, 300, 400. Now if you've noticed we started with 1, we went to 10, and now we're at 100, but not every bar graph scale has to be in those types of increments. So it's also it's also appropriate if we made the scale, we don't even have to make the scale start at 0 if we don't want to, we could make the scale start at, say, 500, and go to 600, 700, 800, 900. So that would be an appropriate scale for a school. We could also change the increments. We could go, we could go maybe 550, 600, 650, 700, and then of course A, B, C, and D would be the different types of schools. Now let's ask another question and we will say how many people are in a city? So let's go here and do this one. So. A city would not be a city with zero people, so I'm, I'm definitely going to start. I'm, I'm not going to start here with zero. I think that's that's way too small of a number. So maybe we will, maybe we'll start with ten thousand, and maybe we will go twelve thousand, fourteen thousand, sixteen thousand, and eighteen thousand people. Now notice every time the difference between each mark 
are always the same because they're the same distance apart. So that's important to know on scales. Now the scales can change depending on what the data says. You always want to make sure that your top number is, is greater than or equal to your tallest bar. And you want to make sure that your minimum number is equal to or smaller than your shortest bar. Now last but not least, let's do how many people in a country. And for that, maybe we will, we will get up in the millions. But what I want you to notice is that each bar graph is unique and they, and they can vary and you can get different, different answers based on different scales. So let's say that countries A, B, C, and D, let's say maybe we have uh, let's do let's do nine million, ten million, eleven million, twelve million, thirteen million. So if you notice the numbers that we used for each type of graph were specific and realistic to those graphs and we did that by changing the scale or the vertical axis so that's how you can have data that that change based on the scale now let's look at it a different way let's look at a bar graph scale let's look at some bar graph scale examples so on the left we have a bar graph um, it doesn't really have a title it's just kind of symbolic and what I want to do is I actually want I want to change the scale so on the left we have a bar graph and category A has about 32 category B has 38 and category C looks like maybe right at 35. Now the left bar graph is sufficient. This is good. It explains everything. Um, you have you have the bars there about the same height. The scale the scale is fine because the top number is greater than or equal to the tallest bar. The the minimum number is less is, is less than or equal to the lowest bar but let's actually let's actually change the scale and let's make an equivalent bar graph with a different scale so uh, like we said let's start with the minimum number a little bit closer to our to our smallest number so maybe let's start with let's start with 30 and let's make our top number greater than or equal to our highest number. So maybe we can make this one 40. Now, in between here, right in the middle, we'll call that 35. And then we can mark the, we can mark the, the other ones kind of in between if we, if we wanted to. So we could do maybe 36, 37, 38, 39, and so on. So I will, you don't have to mark all of these, but I'm going to quickly just to make sure that there's no confusion. Okay, so now let's make let's make an equivalent bar graph. So category A was 32. Here, let's mark 32. Okay, now notice this, this bar is shorter than it was on the left, but it still, it still measures 32, so it's correct. Now let's go to category B, and it's 38. So let's 
draw this bar all the way up to 38. Now it's pretty similar in height to the other bar, but that really that really doesn't make much of a difference. So just as long as just as long as this bar is measured to the same number, we're good. And then category C is 35. So what you would want to do here is you would want to make the C bar 35 and go ahead and graph it. Now this is a good example of how changing the scale can give you an equivalent graph. And so these graphs are the same. And all we did was change the scale. I hope that was helpful of explaining bar graph scales and how important they are. Um, for more for more videos like this, check out learnalgebrafaster.com.